Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So I have a few things to talk about before we get into this video. Now, obviously I will be showcasing all the three different desolate bosses. So we are starting with Shadow Gale, then Shadow Stream, and finally Shadow Fire. But a very important thing to take note of is I will definitely not be showing a free to play team. This probably does not even work. There is some degree of necessity for pay to win Esper. So for example, I'm using a bunch of Epic Shimmer types. I'm using some legendaries as well. And those are not going to be free to play at all. But the whole point of this video is not to show off my Esbers or anything like that. It's not, it's not to show off my team, right? It is just to give you an idea of what is needed in order to perform said tasks. But even with that said, my teams are not strictly consistent EX++ teams. In fact, my Shadow Gale team is probably more consistent at an EX state. It only rarely ever goes into EX++. And another thing that I need to mention is I'm not going to tell you what my Dahlia speed is. I am only going to say that she's at least 300 speed. You can connect the dots yourself. And the reason for that is PvP, especially for Holo Battle. And if you're not able to understand why that's the case, you have only yourself to blame. Now with the intro out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about the Espers that I'm bringing here. So first, we are talking about Catherine, right? And as you can see, she is currently running on Astro Witchcraft. And it is super important that, okay, at least for my speed, which is I think about 230 plus, it is very important that she has Astro Witchcraft because that gives her more turns, well, based on RNG, right? But it gives her more turns and every time she takes a turn, she's going to cleanse the debuffs on my Aspers. And that also includes removing one stack of the debuff that this boss lands on us. So if she pops an Astro Witchcraft here, she is going to remove two stacks from each of my Aspers for a total of 12 stacks, which is very important in trying to ensure that we get more petals, right, to increase our score multiplier. And then next we have Celine, who is really good in giving us the speed buff, and on top of that she also gives us the extra defense buff, not so much for the defense buff itself, but because whenever we gain buffs, we are going to chip off one stack of the debuff that Shadow Gale lands on us. So that's pretty straightforward, although I am running her with Ocean Waves so that she has a better chance of, you know, just going through her skills, turn cycling and all that, right, skill cycling. And then we move on to Essenath, who is quite useful here, it's quite necessary as well. You can use a Clara if you want to, but the reason why I feel like Essenath is a little bit better in Clara is because she is able to give herself an additional turn when the boss lands an AoE attack, and therefore she's able to cycle through her skills a little bit better than Clara. And of course, let's not forget that she also provides an additional 5% AP push as opposed to Clara. Now let's move on to Sender, who is really essential because of his speed lead, but on top of that, he also brings quite decent DPS output, but that's basically it. And then moving on to our Chloe, she is just our main DPS Esper here, and the way I speed tune her here is somewhat perfect, so she's going to throw both of her AoE attacks in this one particular part where the boss is stunned. So that's going to be quite essential in making sure that our score is high, and then finally we have Dahlia who is just pushing our AP, and just giving us the attack and crit rate buff. Not that the crit rate buff is necessary, but that also chips away at the debuff. But at the start of this video, I did point out that we average at about EX score and not anything higher. We do manage to get EX plus sometimes, but EX plus plus is extremely rare. And the reason why it is so rare is we need Catherine to proc her Astro Witchcraft three whole times. That's right, 20% chance to proc it, and she needs to proc it three entire times just so that we can remove enough of the debuffs to gain a 16 times multiplier, and I've not actually seen myself go up to 18 times yet, but I think it is entirely possible if my Catherine pops off 4 Astro Witchcraft. And as you can see over here, we are actually scratching at the scoreboard, we are trying our best to recover that additional 400 missing points. So this team is not very consistent, but the thing is this is the best that I have right now. I might try to find a way to improve it by maybe increasing the speed of Catherine. I think she's probably the most scalable as per here because you know the more turns that she takes is not going to affect your turn orders or your turn cycling and all that. I think the more turns that she takes is just going to benefit you and it's not going to take away from your score. So giving her Astro Witchcraft and just as much speed as you can is going to be very effective for your Shadow Game runs and I think that's basically it. But what you might also notice is that Catherine is constantly pushing the AP of my team and that is I think a bug. So the reason why this is working is because my team has one additional stack of debuff left and therefore Catherine's AI actually determines that as cleansing a debuff which then pushes your team's AP. So whenever she takes a turn here she's actually pushing the AP of my entire team which is <laughs> hilarious to see. But I don't think that this is necessarily going to affect my EX++ uh, scoring rate. I don't really think that it is necessary for that to happen in order for me to get EX++. Anyway if you do not have for Catherine, you can use Jinyu Yao who is slightly less efficient because she does not bring a buff. But if you do not have Jinyu Yao as well, you can definitely go for Berenice. Berenice has buffs that stack. Or rather, you know, we do not have shoe buffs over here so that's gonna work. And regeneration buffs stack. So that's it for Shadow Gale, let's move on to Shadow Stream. 
So you notice some common faces here. So number one, we are using Essenaf again, we are using Dahlia as well, and we are using Sander. So these three Espers are, in my opinion, one of the best Espers for Desktop Lens because they cover so much ground. Essenaf and Dahlia have just so much value in pushing your AP, and Sander just brings the speed lead, which is really good for Shadow Stream. Now, even though he is going to be an Inferno type, which is negatively impacted by Shadow Stream's typing as a flow type, it is still going to be fine because there is that essence of RNG involved, yes, but that 25% speed lead is going to be really big, especially for our team that needs to take a lot of turns. Or rather, that is going to be the catch of Shadow Stream. So what you notice over here is I'm no longer using my Selene, while most people should be still using their Selene. Instead, I'm using Anasidora. And the reason why I'm using Anasidora over Selene is that they are both on ocean waves. But the thing about Anasidora is she has a much better proc rate on ocean waves than does Selene because Anasidora takes a couple of turns every time she uses her third skill. So she has the potential to proc a speed buff every single turn that she takes, which is not that rare in my opinion. And how it needs to work is when she uses her third skill first, she gives your team a speed buff and then she gains another turn which then uses the second skill. But if she pops an ocean wave proc over here and when her turn comes around again and she gets another ocean wave proc, she would immediately have her third skill up again. So her efficiency is a lot better than Selene. Now you might be wondering, right, so why didn't I use Anasidora for the first team? Why didn't I use her for Shadow Gale? The answer is very simple. Selene brings a defense buff. That's about it. And then moving on to Gaius, the reason why I'm using him here is because he takes a lot of turns. So whenever he transforms, he actually takes two turns in total. And he's one of the few espers on my lineup, even though he's not so speedy, to actually remove all of that pink debuff on your HP bar. And he can do that because he takes so many turns. I think he takes in total about 6 turns in this one particular part of the fight. Well, or something like that. And that allows him to clear off all of it, which promotes our points, right? It gives us a better score multiplier. And I mean, on top of that, he also does a tremendous amount of damage. But he's obviously going to be a very pay-to-win factor here. And before I talk about Tang Yun, I need to talk a little bit more about the efficiency of this team and how often it hits EX++. So it's a little bit better than in Shadow Gale. I definitely hit EX++ a lot easier than in Shadow Gale. And in fact, I average mostly at about EX+. But what is the main difference or what is the factor that changes an EX+, to an EX++ for this one lineup that I'm using? And that is Tang Yun. So over here, when the boss is stunned, this is the part where Tang Yun needs to go crazy. He needs to proc his pursuit quite a couple of times at least, so that we can just hit that damage milestone and that multiplies by 14 times for like in this instance, right? So if Tang Yun chooses not to pursuit, then we are going to end up with an EX plus score. But if he decides to go crazy on his pursuits, then we are going to have a good time. So in this particular run, if I include the Avatar proc into a pursuit, we did a total of 4 pursuit attacks. But obviously this is also very scalable because I can definitely improve the stats of Tang Yun here. I can definitely make him a lot more damagey, so it's a little bit easier for us to hit the EX++ score. And I mean, a little bit of the RNG also depends on Sander if he's able to land his crits or not, or if he misses entirely, then that might even push us down to an EX sometimes. And it also wouldn't hurt to increase my Tang Yun speed. There is very little room for you to speed tune him. It's not the same as Chloe because Chloe really depends on her 4 turn cooldown 3rd skill. But for Tang Yun, you can just spam his skills. I think it's entirely fine. And the thing is, if you make him faster, he's just going to turn cycle a little bit better and get his 3rd skill up more efficiently. So your turn cycling shouldn't be too much of a problem, I think. And obviously the same goes for Sander as well, who has a really short 3 turn cooldown. So if you can make him super fast, I think that's just going to improve your runs. That's about it. And that is about all I can say for Shadow Stream. I think the rest is pretty straightforward. So the turn order, the turn cycling is extremely important over here. But in my opinion, I think that Shadow Stream is probably one of those fights that don't really matter so much to most players. I think you can definitely do better by farming Shadow Gale and also Shadow Fire, which is the third and final desolate boss that we are going to take a look at right after this one. But obviously, don't forget to leave any comments down below if you have any questions, comments or concerns, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And now let's finally take a look at Shadow Fire. So the same few faces again, right? We have Essenath here, we have Dahlia here. We do not have Sender, even though I think it's possible to run him here. But Gaius, I am using Gaius here as well. But the thing is, I feel like Gaius is one of those espers that you don't really need to bring. If you have a Zora, I think Zora is going to work uh, equally efficient. Or maybe even better in some cases, because Gaius is kind of like going to waste his third skill on the ice, because he only hits five times, he doesn't actually hit in a true AoE damage. And that is unlike Zora, who actually hits a true AoE damage, which is a lot better over here. So true AoE damage, like for example, your Jiangban here, your Liling here, your, even your Lin Xiao, those are better AoE choices. But I want you to pay attention to one change that I did, which is my Chloe. So she is not using the same set as what I were previously. So now instead of her 6 slot being an attack percentage, she is now running a speed. So this allows her to take more turns a little bit more efficiently because we are not running with a speed buff, we are not running with a speed lead as well as opposed to Shadow Gale. So she needs to compensate for herself, so she needs to be a little bit faster over here. So do take note that my Chloe is a little bit faster. 
And you'll see why, because when we hit the phase where the boss is stunned, then she would be able to have her third skill up again. That's very important. And another way that you can replace a Chloe, if let's say it doesn't really work for you, you can try using a Lin Xiao for the defense break. But I generally don't really prefer using a Lin Xiao because she is not reliable for landing crits after the boss is stunned. Now, Tiang Man is going to be essential. She is going to be irreplaceable for me. And so as for Liling as well. I can definitely use Zora here, but I think Liling is probably going to be a little bit better in some cases. However, another thing to take note about Liling is you may not want to max out his second skill. I mean, it depends on your build, but for my build right here, it is not a good idea for me to max out his second skill because he's going to waste it in this part of the fight. And he's not going to use it when the boss is stunned where the combo multipliers come around. And that would definitely affect my EX++ scoring and it's definitely going to push it down quite a fair bit. So I think if you do not max your Liling, especially if you're running a team like mine, then you are probably going to hit the EX++ a little bit more efficiently. So as you can see here, Liling did waste his second skill. Alternatively, I can try to reduce his speed a little bit so that hopefully he uses his second skill in this particular part of the fight. But right now, I don't really want to touch my Espers all that much, especially since it is not so difficult for me to hit the EX++ right now. So Shadowfire is definitely the easiest boss fight for me in terms of hitting an EX++, which is also a good thing for me because this drops all the very essential boost stones, right? So you have all the Windwalker boost stones, you have the War Machine boost stones as well, which are just very essential for pushing your Desolate Land fights even better. And it is also arguably arguably quite useful for the Sentinel Hunt boss as well. And I mean, you really can't go wrong with having more speed on your team, so this is definitely one place where I would highly suggest that most of you guys spend most of your time farming. Well, aside from farming Chronos. So that'll be it for the EX++ on all three Desolate Land bosses. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about my teams, what are some of your questions, comments and concerns. What are you unsure about with the teams that I'm running over here? Leave them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And obviously there will be more ways to improve my team, like let's say if I manage to pull an Unas or if I manage to get an Alice as well, those consistent espers, they are going to be essential for you know pushing the EX++ scoring a little bit more efficiently than what I'm currently running right now. So as opposed to some of those 12 million, 13 million, even 14 million teams out there my team is relatively conservative but with that said i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to give a thumbs up it really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content now with that said this has been dairy free to play and as always i will see you in the next video